shows that we have been given new life. We are now God's children, and we know you. God is love, and anyone who doesn't love others has never known him. God showed his love for us when he sent his only son into the world to give us life. Real love isn't our love for God, but his love for us. God sent his son to be the sacrifice by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we must love each other. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is truly in our hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Well, let's pray. We thank you, God, for this privileged hour where we gather in this sacred space. We pray that you would meet us here. We call upon your presence. We ask that not only, O oh God, would you be in our hearts, but that you would be in our community as we share together. That not only might we be changed, transformed, made into the image of Jesus, but that we as a community would be as well. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to assume from the outset that you've had a great summer and that you've done wonderful things and learned wonderful things and that you are excited for fall to get started, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things, we, we had an opportunity, we went up to Loon Lake. Uh, some of you are aware that Brian's mother-in-law has a cottage at Loon Lake. One of the reasons I adore it is I have a, a kayak. I take it and I can go out into these back two bays uh, that are really, really shallow. And the neat thing about it is there's just tremendous amount of wildlife out there. Uh, I spooked a blue heron uh, who was 15 feet away, having a great old time, didn't know I was coming around the bend because I was perfectly quiet. Uh, there's a bird, a bird called a, uh, uh, a kingbird, uh, which is up in the trees, which was chattering at me and chasing me away, evidently from a nest. Uh, it was nice to be able to see the fish, and I, still there was a fish that kept showing up about yay long, fairly thin, with a black stripe on its side. I had no idea what it was, but it was fun to kind of chase him through the water. The only strange thing was when I got to a certain spot, and deep down in the water, not the deep down, two feet, <laughs> all the grass at the bottom, went the other way about six or eight inches wide. I don't know what it was, but it might have been bigger than my kayak. Uh, and uh, it was just, but it's just such a fun experience. The other thing I've discovered is that in really, really shallow bays, this is one that was filled in at some point, they plugged up a river, there's all these dead trees in the bottom, and if you're not paying good attention, you can land your kayak on the top of them. Um, I know how many places I've landed because all the rocks and trees in the back bay have the shimmy marks where I had to shimmy myself. I got, it was really bad this weekend because the front line on the boat is a loop and it got stuck at an underwater stump. Uh, and I was way far away from anybody else. It was me. And I knew that if I didn't do something, I didn't want to jump out of the boat because I don't know if you know anything about lakes like that. The muck goes down about 10 feet and you can just disappear from life. And quite frankly, there are monsters. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, so I, I what, what, what's the old song? Shimmy, shimmy, coconut? Oil? I don't know. I, you know, I did that in every different way you can imagine. A paddle forward, back, and eventually came up. I was saying prayers all the way back. It's been a great summer. We got to see a Noah, of course, again, who is uh, seven weeks old and 13 pounds. Uh, he is a little furnace. When he and I get together, the house practically is on fire, uh, and he doesn't handle it very well. My daughter-in-law calls him when he gets really, really crabby, which happens when he overheats, the, uh, the toothless, angry old man. <laughs> I don't know where she would have any idea what that looks like, <laughs> because it does happen. I think we've had a great summer, and fall is coming. We're going to put that off for a, a few minutes. Um, what we're going to talk about is what it is that we have. One of the things that Sue and I have learned about is how fun it is to be. Grandparents know it is cute. With family, it's easy to be in love and to do loving things, isn't it? You, you, you hang out, you, you have fun. Helping out when needed, remembering special days, getting gifts, taking meals, sharing resources, using your time and your energy and emotions with your family and your dearest friends, it's just like, it's just like so natural. I mean, our days at Loon Lake were glorious and loony as always, but they're wonderful because they're people we know we love. But when it comes time to others we don't know so well and who 
we're not sure are really with us, we can be quite guarded. None of us really want to get hurt. So naturally, we're careful with offering our loving support to people we don't know well. And when it comes to people who don't think right and, in our estimation, don't do right, we are prepared not to be all that loving at all. And here is John, purported to be uh, one of the apostles, telling his group of followers of Jesus and us something remarkably radical. That loving each other, even our enemies, is the evidence that God is in us. And that in, if in fact, we are not loving people that are not easy to love, then maybe God is not in us. Have you ever wondered about your salvation or about your status in the kingdom of God? John says that all the evidence that you need of a sanctified life, that is, a God-changed life is the way you love others who don't automatically love you back. Now, Jesus said exactly the same thing in his own teachings, that it's easy to love family and friends, that there is no credit in the kingdom of God if you love people who are just like you, because that is assumed. Even some of the worst characters on the Game of Thrones have proved that they can love each other. Now, they also don't pots of hot liquid gold over each other. You know, that happens. The fact is, we reward those who love us. In legal terms, I think it's called a quid pro quo, or in other language, a tit for tat, or you butter my bread, I butter yours. Give the same as you get. Loving lovers is the way it works. But in the kingdom of God, we're living in a different economy. The deal with God is different. God loves us completely, even when we don't come close to loving God completely. And so the author of 1 John points out, it becomes clear that there should be a wild overage of love in us. So much so that we should be able to share that love with even the nastiest of people. Because God has overflowed his love in and through us. We should be like a backyard swimming pool with a fire hose in it, slopping over the edges full, like the river where it has rained for days, flowing like a torrent, but neither of her falls, so overwhelmed with God's love that we can't help but share it with others, even the kind of others that Jesus loved, outcasts. So all the evidence you need that God is in your life is in your willingness and, in fact, your actions that show without any doubt that God's love is overflowing in you. So, so the question is, how do you do that? On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you in this process? Are you a 3 or a 4? Remembering that loving your spouse, your children, your parents, your in-laws, well, maybe get some credit for that. And your friends really doesn't count. All that counts is the overflowing love you have shown by your attitudes and what you do to people you don't know, or perhaps you may honestly feel don't deserve your love or even God's. So if you're doing well at that, that's great. If you're not doing so well at that, what's holding you back? Loving others who don't love you is hard. It feels scary and leaves us feeling vulnerable. Loving jerks and people we don't know very well is hard. And please understand, I am not suggesting that you love people who are abusive to you. That's not the point. Loving them may be making sure that their abuse is dealt with. Loving them can be hard love, tough love. But nonetheless, choosing to love those who don't love us is what the kingdom of God is about. What is on the list of people you would find it hard to love? Your crabby neighbors, that jerk at work, the folks at Spectrum Internet, and everybody hates them. Uh, or that fool that cuts you off in traffic 17 times on uh, 87 coming home. That's why I still wish I had missiles attached to my car. But some folks may be ones that we need to love because that is what they're missing. In any case, the evidence of a Christian life, Christ is us, is the way we individually and as a whole community choose to love folks who need our love but who don't have a connection with us. As a church, we are always trying to find ways to challenge our faith, challenge our love by seeking out communities that we can love. It's one of the reasons the deacons do such amazing things to try and feed the hungry, including little children with backpacks. 
helping folks with medical conditions get some of the things that they need, care for those who are grieving. And it's why we would send a group of folks to Texas to rehab flood damaged housing. Allison's going to say a word about that. Sure, it will help them, but most importantly, it will allow us to let that love of God flow in us. It's why we send money to help Rachel with her projects in Namibia. It's why we are always on the lookout for needs nearby that we can make a difference doing something about. Not just because it's going to make their life easier or better, but it's because that's who we are. That's our nature. That's God's presence in us. We are always looking for ways to love those who need the presence of God in their life. That kind of healing and grace that they can only get at the throne of the Most High King. So what are some of the things that you are doing to love others? What are some of the things that you see the church is doing? And most importantly, what are some of the things you see that we are doing? Don't be shy. Speak up. Let us hear what's going on in your head and your heart so that we together can be the kingdom of God and God's amazing incarnated love at every opportunity. Some of you know that these verses uh, a long time ago were set to music. It goes something like this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone who loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He who loveth not Knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7, <laughs> Just proof that I'm back. <laughs> Gracious God Almighty, we thank you for the privilege of your word, which reminds us who we are and how we are to be living. Sometimes it's easy to get off track. Sometimes it's easy just to get so busy that we're no longer doing what you've called us to do or being who you've called us to be as we gather together once again and restart our community life. We pray that we would be very much aware of your call to give out the love that you've given to us to everyone else we need. May it be so. We pray these things through.